everyone, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. I am coming to you on a Saturday afternoon, and as I have been promising for more than a week, I'm going to touch on a topic that many of you wanted to know about. There are two really pervasive myths in the world of breast cancer. One is that wearing a bra can increase a woman's odds into be developing breast cancer. The second is that using aluminum-based deodorants will increase your chances of breast cancer. Neither are proven, both are myths, but yet they're pervasive in society. It doesn't take long to realize how, how many people think that this is actually a thing. You can go online and search bra free or bras and cancer. Heck, there's even a website that's called brafree.org and their sole purpose is to educate women on the facts that wearing a bra for more than 12 hours a day will increase your risk of developing breast cancer. Sadly, their information is based on a book that has was written in the 1990s that has long since been debunked and further research has proven is not correct despite the, the research done in 2014, this myth that wearing a bra remains. And it's a myth. Every single cancer organization around the world is pretty adamant that the bras that you wear or I wear up to 12 hours a day do not cause cancer. In fact, Susan G. Komen, the American Cancer Society, cancer.org, the National Institute of Health, uh, cancer department, along with research centers that in the NIH for cancer in the UK, so many of these amazing organizations all say there is absolutely no risk of developing breast cancer from wearing a bra. How did this start though? Like why would someone get on this idea that wearing a bra would somehow make you more prone to developing cancer? It seems odd, right? Well, in 1995, a book was published um, called Dress to Kill, written by Sidney Ross, singer, and Sama Grissmeyer. In the book, they claimed that women that wore a underwire bra for 12 hours a day had a higher risk of developing breast cancer than a woman that didn't wear a bra. Their theory was that the lymph system was restricted by wearing an underwire bra and that by restricting the lymph system, somehow your body would store up toxins and, that, and those toxins would somehow turn into cancer. Now, what this myth really is doing is it's going into this whole wooey-woo pseudoscience belief that your body can't properly detoxify itself. If you know anything about the body, the body is a very well-oiled machine and has an incredible system for getting rid of the toxins and waste that are in our system. In fact, the lymph system within the breast tissue, according to multiple studies, along with researchers in the breast cancer field, say that that's not even how the majority of toxins exit the breast system. Most of the toxics toxins that are in our body exit through the kidneys and the liver, not through the lymph system. And this whole idea that the lymph system being clogged would develop cancer doesn't show any evidence within scientific studies because cancer doesn't develop from clogged lymph ducts. So there's lots of research proving this wrong. In fact, in 2014, a second study proved that there was no increased risk for someone that didn't wear a bra for more than 12 hours and those that did. The one thing that they did say might be a risk is that women who have larger breasts who might need to wear a bra longer may be more at risk for developing breast cancer because the more tissue and fat you have in your breasts, you could develop breast cancer. The theory presented in the 1995 book was that, well, maybe thin women just don't get breast cancer enough and so therefore they don't need to wear a bra. It's more probable that the smaller breast tissue and the smaller breast size was the factor along with the woman having a healthier body mass index and just an overall healthier body. 
no matter where you go, you'll still see these myths. They're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram. There's videos and there's photos of how bras contain toxins and those toxins are gonna get into your breasts and that's simply just not how it works. It's just a means for us to, as women to feel like we need to control something. Cancer is scary and breast cancer in particular is something that impacts women so intimately because the breasts for us are a means of our sexuality. They're also a vehicle for how we've nurtured and loved our children. For most of us, the one thing we want when we're dealing with illness is we want to feel like we have a sense of control. What can we do to stop this elusive cancer from spreading into our body? Can we take steps to minimize cancer from entering us? And the fact is, is these myths about bras really permeate that fear and that need for us to have control. So by telling us, hey, if you don't wear a bra, you're going to reduce the risk of cancer, it makes you feel like you have some sort of say in what happens to your body. Unfortunately, in most, in many cases of breast cancer, no matter what you do, there's very little that can be done to do, decrease the risk. What science does know is that <clears throat> the chance of getting breast cancer is actually increases with age. And 65% of women that are over 55 years old are typically, that's when they're diagnosed. After 45, white women are more likely to get breast cancer than black women, and black men, women have a higher incidence before age 45. Family history, certain inherited gene mutations, increase the risk of developing breast cancer. However, these genes account for only 5 to 10% of overall cases. A higher history of breast cancer, abnormal breast cells, or certain non-invasive precancer like lobular carcinoma, increase the risk of developing invasive cancers. And then other things like if you started menstruation before age 12 can increase your risk of breast cancer because it affects the level of reproductive hormones that you've been exposed to in your lifetime. And then if you start menopause later than after age 55, it also increases your risk of breast cancer. Des dense breast tissue, including fibrocystic breasts, increase the risks of breast cancer. So those are the things that you can't control. And all of this comes from a website called the centersforresearch.org. The entire article on this website is talking to women about the myths associated with bras. Factors that you could potentially control, which they say are to maintain a healthy body weight, remain physically active, and that women who drink two or more alcoholic beverage per day actually have an increased risk of cancer by 21%. Higher levels of radiation in the chest area before the age of 30, so if you've had a lot of x-rays, if you took DES during pregnancy, that would have been in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, will increase your risk. And then some oral contraceptives may slightly increase, increase the risk of developing breast cancer. And then, Finally, women that have children later in life have a higher risk of breast cancer, contrasting having a child younger in life. And then if you take hormonal therapy in menopause, you may see a slight risk in breast cancer. So nothing in there says anything to do about wearing a bra. In fact, the whole idea that the lymph system is going to be constricted and that pressure on your breasts and the breasts not being able to move and being free just doesn't hold weight. See that? And it doesn't cause cancer. So fear not, ladies. It's okay to wear your bra. It's okay to wear it at night. Heck, if you need to wear your bra all the time, do not fear. Just take care of your health and make sure you understand the risk factors. In the description below, I'm going to include the article here that tells you what your risk factors are and why you shouldn't worry about whether or not wearing a bra will cause cancer. Now, moving on to antiperspirant. This is another massive, massive myth in the natural health world. If you go online, you will find, oh geez, tons of companies, including Dove, Tom's of Maine, so, um, Secret, every single company right now is selling an aluminum-free deodorant. 
There's this myth in the natural health world that aluminum in antiperspirant is actually what by causing your pores to clog, your body is somehow unable to release the toxins in your body and then those toxins will then store in your body and therefore cause cancer. Because you put your deodorant on this part of your body and a lot of cancers actually start up in the upper lymph ducts, people wrongly believe that it's because of aluminum that isn't even really in deodorant causing the cancer. But I think you can see already by the way I've described this, it is going into this myth again that your body cannot properly detoxify. Here's the thing, no matter how great your deodorant is, there's absolutely no way that your deodorant will stop all of your sweating. It simply doesn't work that way. It does prevent a lot of sweating and it also does improve and like like deodorize you so that your sweat doesn't smell but your body isn't like your pores aren't cut off you can still breathe it's just helping sort of eliminate that unpleasant odor and the massive amounts of sweat some women deal with also aluminum isn't even really an ingredient in deodorant there are properties of aluminum but they're not aluminum and there's no evidence that aluminum of any kind causes cancer. So this belief that if you're going to put an aluminum-based product under your arm, you're suddenly gonna develop cancer, it's again that myth of detoxification that just simply is woo. There's really no fear, and again, this is playing into that same myth that you can control this. You can control yourself from getting breast cancer. And if you don't use aluminum deodorant, you will somehow not get breast cancer. But again, there's zero correlation between breast cancer and aluminum properties that are in deodorant. I'm gonna click a bunch of links that you can look in the description to really get yourself up to speed. Major organizations like the Susan G. Komen Foundation, the American Cancer Society, along with cancer.org and cancer.gov through the United States government all say the same thing. There's nothing to fear about using deodorant and the myth that it clogs pores and makes toxins store in your lymph system is completely squashed. There's no proof. So it's scary, you guys. I get it. You don't want to, you want to feel like at some point in life that you can control what's going to happen to your body. The best thing that you can do for yourself if you are worried about your breast health is to maintain an, a healthy body weight, get regular mammograms over the age of 40, and make sure that you aren't drinking a lot of alcohol along with just taking care of your health. Some things just aren't going to be in your control. If you menstruated early, if you go through menopause late, there's just no way for you to control that. If there's a family history of breast cancer, you can't control that. You can only control what you can do. And it's not worth your time, your energy, or the fear inside of this to worry that you're somehow going to give yourself cancer by using a product that actually helps you feel better during the day, not get back aches, and then a product that makes you not stink and sweat and have like oh, the nasty funk, you guys. I've never tried an aluminum-free natural deodorant that actually works and doesn't actually make you stink and that doesn't cause you to sweat. I get it. It's scary. Just try, try, try to let it go, you guys. There's a lot of woo out there and there's no need to spend your time reading goop, going to The Honest Company, reading Health Impact News, stick with the sources like the American Cancer Society, cancer.gov, or the Susan G. Coleman Foundation if you want to know what's current and trendy and accurate in the world of science, oncology, with breast cancer, okay? I hope you guys found this informational. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Make sure, you, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Ring the bell so you know when I go live. And as always, make sure to follow me on Twitter at WAO Crystal Ball. I am so excited to hear what your thoughts are on this stream, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.